Fritz Reuter Leiber Jr. December 24, 1910 to September 5, 1992, was an American writer of fantasy, horror, and science fiction. He was also a poet, actor in theater and films, playwright and chess expert. With writers such as Robert E. Howard and Michael Moorcock, Liber can be regarded as one of the fathers of sword and sorcery fantasy, having coined the term. Topic Life Fritz Liber was born December 24, 1910, in Chicago, Illinois, to the actors Fritz Liber and Virginia Bronson Liber. For a time, he seemed inclined to follow in his parents' footsteps. The theater and actors are prominently featured in his fiction. He spent 1928 touring with his parents' Shakespeare Company, Fritz Leiber and Co., before entering the University of Chicago, where he was elected to Phi Beta Kappa and received an undergraduate Ph.B. degree in psychology and physiology or biology with honors in 1932. From 1932 to 1933, he worked as a lay reader and studied as a candidate for the ministry at the General Theological Seminary in Chelsea, Manhattan, an affiliate of the Episcopal Church, without taking a degree. After pursuing graduate studies in philosophy at the University of Chicago from 1933 to 1934 and failing once more to take a degree, he remained based in Chicago while touring intermittently with his parents' company under the stage name of Francis Lathrop and pursuing a concurrent literary career. Six short stories in the 2010 collection Strange Wonders, a collection of rare Fritz Leiber works works carry 1934 and 1935 dates. He also appeared alongside his father in uncredited parts in several films, including George Cukor's Camille 1936, James Wales' The Great Garrick 1937, and William Dieterle's The Hunchback of Notre Dame 1939. In 1936, he initiated a brief yet intense correspondence with H. P. Lovecraft, who encouraged and influenced Liber's literary development before succumbing to small intestine cancer and malnutrition in March 1937. Liber introduced F. A. F. H. R. D. and the Grey Mouser in Two Sot Adventure, his first professionally published short story in the August 1939 edition of Unknown, edited by John W. Campbell. Liber married Jonquil Stevens on January 16, 1936, their only child, the philosopher and science fiction writer Justin Liber, was born in 1938. From 1937 to 1941, he was employed by Consolidated Book Publishing as a staff writer for the Standard American Encyclopedia. In 1941, the family moved to California, where Liber served as a speech and drama instructor at Occidental College during the 1941–1942 academic year. Unable to conceal his disdain for academic politics as the United States entered World War II, he decided that the struggle against fascism was more important than his long-held pacifist convictions. He accepted a position with Douglas Aircraft in quality inspection, primarily working on the C-47 Skytrain. Throughout the war, he continued to regularly publish fiction in a variety of periodicals. Thereafter, the family returned to Chicago, where Liber served as associate editor of Science Digest from 1945 to 1956. During this decade, forestalled by a fallow interregnum from 1954 to 1956, his output, including the 1947 Arkham House anthology Knight's Black Agents, was characterized by Poole Anderson as a lot of the best science fiction and fantasy in the business. In 1958, the Libers returned to Los Angeles.
By this juncture, he was able to relinquish his journalistic career and support his family as a full time fiction writer. Jonquil's death in 1969 precipitated Liber's permanent relocation to San Francisco and exacerbated his long standing alcoholism after 12 years of fellowship in Alcoholics Anonymous. However, he would gradually regain relative sobriety, an effort impeded by comorbid barbarism abuse over the next two decades. In 1977, he returned to his original form with a fantasy novel set in modern-day San Francisco, Our Lady of Darkness, which is about a writer of weird tales who must deal with the death of his wife and his recovery from alcoholism. Perhaps as a result of his substance abuse, Liber seems to have suffered periods of penury in the 1970s. Harlan Ellison wrote of his anger at finding that the much awarded Liber had to write his novels on a manual typewriter that was propped up over the sink in his apartment, and Mark Laidlaw wrote that, when visiting Liber as a fan in 1976, he was shocked to find him occupying one small room of of a seedy San Francisco residence hotel, its squalor relieved mainly by walls of books. Other reports suggest that Liber preferred to live simply in the city, spending his money on dining, movies and travel. In the last years of his life, royalty checks from TSR, Inc., the makers of Dungeons & Dragons, who had licensed the mythos of the FAFHRD and Grey Mouser series, were enough in themselves to ensure that he lived comfortably. In 1992, the last year of his life, Liber married his second wife, Margot Skinner, a journalist and poet with whom he had been friends for many years. Liber's death occurred a few weeks after a physical collapse while traveling from a science fiction convention in London, Ontario, with Skinner. The cause of his death was stated by his wife to be stroke. He wrote a 100 page plus memoir, Not Much Disorder and Not So Early Sex, which can be found in The Ghost Light. Liber's own literary criticism, including several essays on Lovecraft, was collected in the volume FAFHRD and Me. 1990. Topic theater As the child of two Shakespearean actors, Fritz Sr. and Virginia Bronson, Liber was fascinated with the stage, describing itinerant Shakespearean companies in stories like No Great Magic and Four Ghosts in Hamlet, and creating an actor-producer protagonist for his novel A Spectre as Haunting Texas. Although his Change War novel, The Big Time, is about a war between two factions, the snakes and the spiders, changing and rechanging history throughout the universe, all the action takes place in a small bubble of isolated space-time about the size of a theatrical stage, with only a handful of characters. Judith Merrill, in the July 1969 issue of the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, remarks on Liber's acting skills when the writer won a science fiction convention costume ball. Liber's costume consisted of a cardboard military collar over turn-up jacket lapels, cardboard insignia, an armband, and a spider penciled large in black on his forehead, thus turning him into an officer of the spiders, one of the combatants in his change war stories. The only other component, Merrill writes, was the Liber instinct for theater. Topic. Films Due to the similarity of the names of the father and the son, some filmographies incorrectly attribute to Fritz Jr. roles which were in fact played by his father, Fritz Liber Sr., who was the evil inquisitor in the Errol Flynn adventure film The Sea Hawk and had played in many other movies from 1917 onwards until the late 1950s. 
It is the elder Liber, not the younger, who appears in the Vincent Price vehicle The Web 1947 and in Charlie Chaplin's Monsieur Verdoux 1947. In the cult horror film Equinox 1970, directed by Dennis Muren and Jack Woods, Liber has a cameo appearance as Dr. Waterman, a geologist. In the edited second version of the movie Liber has no spoken dialogue in the film but features in a few scenes. The original version of the movie has a longer appearance by Liber recounting the ancient book and a brief speaking role, all of which was cut from the re-release of the film. He also appears in the 1979 Schick Sun Classics documentary The Bermuda Triangle, based on the book by Charles Berlitz, as Chavez. Topic: Writing career. Liber was heavily influenced by H. P. Lovecraft and Robert Graves in the first two decades of his career. Beginning in the late 1950s, he was increasingly influenced by the works of Carl Jung, particularly by the concepts of the anima and the shadow. From the mid-1960s onwards, he began incorporating elements of Joseph Campbell's The Hero with a Thousand Faces. These concepts are often openly mentioned in his stories, especially the anima, which becomes a method of exploring his fascination with, but estrangement from, the female, Liber-liked cats, which feature prominently in many of his stories. Tigerishka, for example, is a cat-like alien who is sexually attractive to the human protagonist yet repelled by human customs in the novel The Wanderer. Liber's Gummich stories feature a kitten with an IQ of 160, just waiting for his ritual cup of coffee so that he can become human, too. His first stories in the 1930s and 40s were inspired by Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos. The leading critic and historian of the wider mythos, S. T. Joshi, has singled out Liber's The Sunken Land. Unknown Worlds, February 1942 as perhaps the most accomplished of the early stories based on Lovecraft's mythos. Liber also later wrote several essays on Lovecraft the Man, such as, A Literary Copernicus, the publication of which formed a key moment in the emergence of a serious critical appreciation of Lovecraft's life and work. Liber's first professional sale was, Two Sought Adventure, Unknown, August 1939, which introduced his most famous characters, Fafhrd and the Grey Mouser. In 1943, his first two novels were serialized in Unknown, the supernatural horror oriented Conjure Wife partially inspired by his deleterious experiences on the faculty of Occidental College and astounding science fiction Gather, Darkness. 1947 marked the publication of his first book, Night's Black Agents, a short story collection containing seven stories grouped as modern horrors, one as a transition, and two grouped as ancient adventures, The Sunken Land, and Adept's Gambit, which are both stories of Fafhrd and the Grey Mouser. Book publication of the science fiction novel Gather, Darkness followed in 1950. It deals with a futuristic world that follows the Second Atomic Age which is ruled by scientists, until in the throes of a new Dark Age, the Witches Revolt. In 1951, Liber was guest of honor at the World Science Fiction Convention in New Orleans. Further novels followed during the 1950s, and in 1958 The Big Time won the Hugo Award for Best Novel. Liber published further books in the 1960s. His novel The Wanderer also received the Hugo for Best Novel. 
In the novel, an artificial planet, quickly nicknamed the Wanderer, materializes from hyperspace within Earth's orbit. The Wanderer's gravitational field captures the Moon and shatters it into something like one of Saturn's rings. On Earth, the Wanderer's gravity well triggers massive earthquakes, tsunamis, and tidal phenomena. The multi-threaded plot follows the exploits of a large ensemble cast as they struggle to survive the global disaster. Liber received the Hugo Award for Best Novella in 1970 and 1971 for Ship of Shadows, 1969, and Ill Met in Lankmar, 1970. Gonna Roll the Bones, 1967. His contribution to Harlan Ellison's Dangerous Visions anthology received the Hugo Award for Best Novelette and the Nebula Award for Best Novelette in 1968. Our Lady of Darkness 1977, originally serialized in short form in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction under the title, The Pale Brown Thing 1977, featured cities as the breeding grounds for new types of elementals called paramentals, summonable by the dark art of megapolisomancy, with such activities centering on the Transamerica Pyramid. Its main characters include Franz Weston, Jamie Donaldus Byers, and the magician Thibaut de Castries. Our Lady of Darkness won the World Fantasy Award. Novel. Liber also did the 1966 novelization of the Claire Huffaker screenplay of Tarzan and the Valley of Gold. Many of Liber's most acclaimed works are short stories, especially in the horror genre. Owing to such stories as The Smoke Ghost, The Girl with the Hungry Eyes, and You're All Alone, later expanded as The Sinful Ones, he is widely regarded as one of the forerunners of the modern urban horror story. Liber also challenged the conventions of science fiction through reflexive narratives such as A Bad Day for Sales, first published in Galaxy Science Fiction, July 1953, in which the protagonist, Roby, America's only genuine mobile sales robot, references the title character of Isaac Asimov's idealistic robot story, Robbie. Questioning Isaac Asimov's Three Laws of Robotics, Liber imagines the futility of automatons in a post-apocalyptic New York City. In his later years, Liber returned to short story horror in such works as Horrible Imaginings, Black Has Its Charms and the award-winning The Button Molder, The Short Parallel Worlds Story, Catch That Zeppelin, 1975, received the Hugo Award for Best Short Story and the Nebula Award for Best Short Story in 1976. This story shows a plausible alternate reality that is much better than our own, whereas the typical parallel universe story depicts a world that is much worse than our own. Belson Express 1975 won the World Fantasy Award, Short Fiction. Both stories reflect Liber's uneasy fascination with Nazism, an uneasiness compounded by his mixed feelings about his German ancestry and his philosophical pacifism during World War II. Liber was named the second Gandalf Grand Master of Fantasy by participants in the 1975 World Science Fiction Convention Worldcon, after the posthumous inaugural award to J. R. R. Tolkien. Next year he won the World Fantasy Award for Life Achievement. He was guest of honor at the 1979 Worldcon in Brighton, England 1979. 
The science fiction writers of America made him its fifth SFWA Grand Master in 1981, the Horror Writers Association made him an inaugural winner of the Bram Stoker Award for Lifetime Achievement in 1988, named in 1987, and the Science Fiction and Fantasy Hall of Fame inducted him in 2001, its sixth class of two deceased and two living writers, Liber was a founding member of the Swordsmen and Sorcerers Guild of America Saga, a loose-knit group of heroic fantasy authors founded in the 1960s, led by Lynn Carter, with entry by fantasy credentials alone. Some works by Saga members were published in Lynn Carter's Flashing Swords, anthologies. Bliber himself is credited with inventing the term sword and sorcery for the particular subgenre of epic fantasy exemplified by his FAFHRD and Grey Mouser stories. In an appreciation in the July 1969 special Fritz Liber issue of the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, Judith Merrill writes of Liber's connection with his readers that this kind of personal response is shared by thousands of other readers, has been made clear on several occasions. The November 1959 issue of Fantastic, for instance, Liber had just come out of one of his recurrent dry spells, and editor Sele Lowley bought up all his new material until there was enough five stories to fill an issue. The magazine came out with a big black headline across its cover. Liber is back. Topic. FAFHRD and the Grey Mouser His legacy appears to have been consolidated by the most famous of his creations, the FAFHRD and the Grey Mouser stories, written over a span of 50 years. The first of them, Two Sod Adventure, appeared in Unknown, August 1939. They are concerned with an unlikely pair of heroes found in and around the city of Lankmar. FAFHRD was based on Liber himself and the Mouser on his friend Harry Otto Fisher, and the two characters were created in a series of letters exchanged by the two in the mid-1930s. These stories were among the progenitors of many of the tropes of the sword and sorcery genre. They are also notable among sword and sorcery stories in that, over the course of the stories, his two heroes mature, take on more responsibilities, and eventually settle down into marriage. Some FAFHRD and Mouser stories were recognized by annual genre awards. Skyla's Daughter 1961 was short story. Hugo finalist and Ill Met in Lankmar, 1970, won the Best Novella, Hugo and Nebula Awards. Liber's last major work, The Knight and Knave of Swords, 1991, brought the series to a close while leaving room for possible sequels. In the last year of his life, Liber was considering allowing the series to be continued by other writers, but his sudden death made this more difficult. One new FAFHRD and the Mouser novel, Swords Against the Shadowland, by Robin Wayne Bailey, did appear in 1998. The stories were influential in shaping the genre and were influential on other works. Joanna Russ stories about thief assassin Alex collected in 1976 in The Adventures of Alex were in part inspired by FAFHRD and The Grey Mouser, and Alex in fact made guest appearances in two of Liber's stories. Numerous writers have paid homage to the stories. For instance, Terry Pratchett's City of Ankh-Morpork bears something more than a passing resemblance to Lankmar acknowledged by Pratchett by the placing of the swordsman thief, the weasel, and his giant barbarian comrade, Bravd, in the opening scenes of the first Discworld novel. 
More recently, playing off the visit of FAFHRD and the Grey Mouser to our world in Adept's Gambit set in 2nd century BC Tyre, Stephen Saylor's short story, Ill Seen in Tyre takes his Roma Sub Rosa series hero Gordianus to the city of Tyre a hundred years later, where the two visitors from Nawan are remembered as local legends. Fisher and Liber contributed to the original game design of the wargame Lankmar published in 1976 by TSR. <laughs> Selected works FAFHRD and the Grey Mouser series Two Sot Adventure — Collection of six short stories. Later expanded and retitled as Swords Against Death. Swords and Deviltry — Collection of three short stories. Swords Against Death 1970. Collection of ten short stories, an expanded edition of Two Sot Adventure Swords in the Mist 1968. Collection of six short stories Swords Against Wizardry 1968. Collection of four short stories The Swords of Lankmar 1968. Expanded from Skyla's Daughter in Fantastic, 1963. Swords and Ice Magic, 1977. Collection of eight short stories. Though see Rhyme Isle below. The Knight and Knave of Swords, 1988. Collection of four short stories. Retitled Farewell to Lankmar, 2000, UK. Topic novels and novellas Conjure Wife originally appeared in Unknown Worlds, April 1943. This novel relates a college professor's discovery that his wife and many other women are regularly using magic against and for one another and their husbands. Gather, Darkness, serialized in Astounding, May, June, and July 1943, a dystopian, satirical depiction of a future theocracy and the revolution that brings it down. Destiny Times 3, 1945, first in Astounding, reprinted 1957 as Galaxy Novel No. 28. The Sinful Ones 1953, an adulterated version of You're All Alone 1950 Fantastic Adventures Abridged, Liber rewrote the inserted passages and Saw published a revised edition in 1980. The Green Millennium 1953, The Night of the Long Knives Amazing Science Fiction Stories, January 1960. The Big Time expanded 1961 from a version serialized in Galaxy, March and April 1958, which won a Hugo, Change War series. Also available in Ship of Shadows 1979, see collections below. The Silver Eggheads 1961, a shorter version was published in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction in 1959. The Wanderer 1964, Tarzan and the Valley of Gold 1966, novelization of a Claire Huffaker screenplay, A Spectre is Haunting Texas 1969, You're All Alone 1972, the first book edition includes two shorter works as well, a revised version was issued as The Sinful Ones, Our Lady of Darkness 1977. This novel, the title of which is drawn from Thomas de Quincey's Suspiria de Profundis, was published the same year as Dario Argento's Suspiria, which referenced the same idea in de Quincey. It also makes fictional reference to fellow novelists Jack London, Clark Ashton Smith and H. P. Lovecraft and others. 
Rye Mile 1977, somewhere between a novella and a two novelette collection, composed of The Frost Monstream and Rye Mile, offered as a unitary volume, Ervoul, Cheap Street, 1980, limited ed of 200 numbered copies. A standalone edition of a short story originally published in the 1940s fanzine The Acolyte. The Dealings of Daniel Kesurik H.P. Lovecraftian novella written in 1936 and lost for decades Dark Ladies Tor Books, 1999. Omnibus edition of Conjure Wife and Our Lady of Darkness Topic collections Knights Black Agents Arkham House 1947 reprinted by Berkeley 1978 with the addition of two stories The Girl with the Hungry Eyes and A Bit of the Dark World The definitive hardcover edition is the Greg Press 1980 edition which adds a foreword by Richard Powers to the complete contents of the Berkeley edition the Mind Spider and Other Stories 1961. Collection of Six Short Stories. Shadows with Eyes 1962. Collection of Six Short Stories. A Pale of Air 1964. Collection of Eleven Short Stories. Ships to the Stars 1964. Collection of Six Short Stories. The Night of the Wolf 1966. Collection of four short stories. The Secret Songs 1968. Collection of eleven short stories. Night Monsters 1969. Collection of four short stories. UK 1974 edition drops one story and adds four. The Best of Fritz Leiber 1974. Collection of 22 short stories. Introduction by Poole Anderson, The Wizard of Nawin, The Book of Fritz Leiber, 1974. Collection of 10 stories and 9 articles. The Second Book of Fritz Leiber, 1975. Collection of 4 stories, 1 play, and 6 articles. Bazaar of the Bazaar 1978, Heroes and Horrors 1978. Collection of Nine Stories. Ship of Shadows 1979. Collection of Five Award-Winning Short Stories Three Stories Two Novellas and One Novel The Big Time, Change War 1983. Collection of The Change War Short Stories Seven Stories. The Ghost Light 1984. Collection of nine stories with illustrations and an autobiographic essay with photographs. The Liber Chronicles 1990. Collection of 44 short stories. Gummich and Friends 1992. Liber's Cat Stories, the first five of which feature Gummich. Ill Met in Lankmar, White Wolf Publishing, 1995, ISBN 1-56504-926-8 combines Swords and Deviltry, 1970, and Swords Against Death, 1970. Lean Times in Lankmar, White Wolf Publishing, 1996, ISBN 1-56504-927-6 combines Swords in the Mist, 1970, and Swords Against Wizardry, 1970. Return to Lankmar, White Wolf Publishing, 1997, ISBN 1-56504-928-4 combines the Swords of Lankmar 1968 and Swords and Ice Magic 1977 Farewell to Lankmar White Wolf Publishing 1999 ISBN 1-56504-897-0 The Black Gondolier 2000 Collection of 18 short stories Smoke Ghost and Other Apparitions 2002 Collection of 18 short stories
Day Dark, Night Bright collection of 20 short stories, 2002 Horrible Imaginings 2004 collection of 15 short stories. Strange Wonders Subterranean Press, 2010. Edited by Benjamin Shumskij. Collection of 48 unpublished and uncollected works, drafts, fragments, poems, essays, and a play. Fritz Leiber, Selected Stories Nightshade Books, 2010. Edited by Jonathan Strahan and Charles N. Brown. Collection of 17 stories, with an introduction by Neil Gaiman. Topic. Plays Quicks Around the Zodiac, A Farce, Newcastle, VA, Cheap Street, 1983. Reprinted in Strange Wonders, 2010. Topic. Essays The Mystery of the Japanese Clock a standalone essay on the workings of a digital Japanese clock. Montgolfier Press, 1982, with introduction by his son Justin Lieber, reprinted in Strange Wonders, 2010. <laughs> Poetry Demons of the Upper Air, Glendale, CA, Roy A. Squires, 1969. Sonnets to Jonquil and All, Glendale, CA, Roy A. Squires, 1978. Screen adaptations Conjure Wife has been made into feature films three times under other titles. Weird Woman, 1944, starring Lon Chaney Jr. One of six Inner Sanctum mystery films made by Universal Studios, based upon the old Inner Sanctum radio series. Conjure Wife was also adapted for the 1960 TV series Moment of Fear episode title, The Accomplice. Night of the Eagle, also known as Burn, Witch, Burn, 1962, screenplay by Charles Beaumont, Richard Matheson and George Baxt, directed by Sidney Hayers, produced by Albert Fennell. Witch's Brew, also known as Witch Witch as Witch, 1980, directed by Richard Shore and starring Terry Garr and Richard Benjamin. A new film adaptation of Conjure Wife was announced in 2008 to be filmed by U.S. director Billy Ray. It is slated to be a United Artists Studio Canal co-production. The Girl with the Hungry Eyes was filmed under that title by Kastenbaum Films in 1995. This film is not to be confused with the 1967 William Rotzler film The Girl with the Hungry Eyes which is entirely unrelated to Lieber's story. Two Lieber stories were filmed for TV for Rod Serling's Night Gallery. These were, The Girl with the Hungry Eyes. 1970, adapted by Robert M. Young and directed by John Badham, and The Dead Man, adapted and directed by Douglas Hayes. Topic. See also: International 14 Organization. Equals equals notes. <laughs>